Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. So it's about a quarter of five, 725, my son's birthday, Friday, 81.3 degrees. And this one says 26 degrees, 26.3 degrees centigrade. Um, why do I always put a time stamp on there and, you know, kind of a weather gig? I'm, I'm not sure. I guess when I look back over the videos, it's kind of cool to, to know what, what time I shot them, um, the date and all that. If I'm actually working on something, like fixing something, you guys can also kind of get an idea if I'm going step by step how long it's taking me to do this stuff because sometimes I forget and don't say it out loud. So, um... I and mean, just just an idea. Obviously, if I'm working on a bike, and you guys see more or less a week go by, and you see a few timestamps, especially timestamps later in the day, you guys could figure out that I've probably put quite a bit of time into it. If um, if you you know see pretty short timestamps and them stacked up like several in a day. Um, then you guys know that that a project is probably a one day long project. So, had a friend of mine um, tell me that his pressure washer died. This is a Campbell Osfeld. I don't know if you guys could read that. Um, let me leave that there for a second. It's obviously a six horsepower Briggs and Stratton on it. He said he was using it, running the hell out of it, and he said the motor got hot. It's an air-cooled motor, so I am curious to, if I get up here to see if it's all blocked up. Anyway, he says the um, he says it just stopped running. It slowed down and stopped running. So um, he said the motor's blown, and I said, well, normally the pump goes bad. But he goes, no, 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 the motor's blown. And he goes, when you see it, you'll know the motor's blown. So he um, he he gave it to me, and I brought it home. And I pulled out the dipstick, and it has the stinkiest, nastiest, burnt smelling oil in it that I've ever smelled in an engine. I mean, horrible, horrible, horrible. I mean, ungodly. And sure enough, right, it is rock solid, seized. So I dropped the pump, figuring maybe the pump seized, but if you uh, take a look here, right, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I can. I think you guys can see that, right? I hope you can see that. Anyway, basically, I can turn this without any problem, and I still can't turn the motor. So, it sure enough, the uh, the engine seized. Now, a lot of people would say, "Well, that's bad news." Well, turns out, I have a whole pile of these where the pumps are bad. And the engine's good. So I just got me a free pump. Homie likes that. Uh, hopefully, these things are pretty universal about bolting on. But um, now what I can do is um, grab one of the, uh, the bodies. Um, and I, th I think you guys remember from that white box thing. There's like a pile of them inside of it. So... Um, Anyway, yeah, what I need to do is is grab one of the engine slash bodies, and uh, I got, you know, the hose and wand, though he's going to give me his old hose and wand, and uh, slam it together, and I got, got a nice pressure washer. Homie scores one. Now, my big trick is to actually do it before, you, you know, the cows come home, you know, the earth spins its last spin, and you know time comes to an end um, pressure washers I I guess my issue is I really just um, don't use them there's more than one functional pressure washer floating around as a matter of fact there's a brand new one downstairs that I bought from um, uh, Northern Hydraulics and I, I never even put gas in it so putting together another pressure washer it's probably one of those things I should do and uh, and work at getting it a new home my um, the buddy who gave me that one 
his new thing is he's just going to use electric pressure washers. Screw this gasoline powered stuff. The electric ones are just as strong, just as good. You don't have to put gas and oil in them. You don't have to worry about them. I don't know. I, I personally, I have really no experience with either other than getting them broken and pretending like I'm going to fix them. Um, some of you guys might or probably do have a lot more experience. Um, the electric ones, right? You got the um, crack, crack, cracker, K R A C K E R cracker ones, <clears throat> Cratch, cratcher, maybe it's cratcher. So you got that version. You got the one from Northern Hydraulic. I don't know what they call them, Blue Moon or Blue, Blue Water, Blue Velvet, Blue something. And then um, you got the Home Depot ones. I'm not sure who makes who makes those. I once again I have no experience with the electric ones. You guys could probably tell me if any of those are worth owning. He claims they're the greatest thing since sliced bread, but I didn't get the idea that he's run the hell out of it. He said he was running the one outside there for several hours before it blew up. I'm not thinking the electric ones would be happy about running hours and hours and hours in a row, but once again, I have no experience. I'm just thinking that. Um, maybe with the water going through it and everything else, you could keep it cool enough and, and the, um, the electric motors stay alive and um, the pumps stay alive. I, I don't know. No experience. I know the gasoline ones, out of all the ones I've picked up over all the years, it seems that they die of one of two things. They wear out or the people don't drain them and then the winter comes and the cold water in the pressure washer um, cracks them. Um, I've had no seized pumps on pressure washers. I've had worn out pumps and I've had cracked casings on pumps but I've, I've had no, um, no seized pumps. Um, I would kind of expect them to seize but I've, I've not seen that so that's the pressure washer story. Anyway, folks, what am I up to? God knows what I'm up to. I don't even know what I'm up to. I um, was considering hitting some markets. I haven't been to flea markets in forever and trying to get my life back to normal. I was considering hitting some flea markets this weekend, Sunday particularly. But I guess the storm is blowing in, and Sunday and Monday is supposed to be tough. I guess folks in Midwest, up, up Michigan Way, are getting blasted pretty good by this uh, particular storm. Or if you're not blasted at the moment, you will be shortly. Anyway, it's supposed to move toward the coast, and we're supposed to uh, get to enjoy it um, this this week uh, weekend, particularly Sunday into Monday. So I guess it's not moving all that quick. Um, Anyway, for anybody who is getting blasted by the storm, and there were those folks down at um, that campground down south, one of the Carolinas, I think, that got uh, smashed up pretty good when a Category 1 went through and, uh, you, you know, started banging around trailers and tents and vehicles and all that. Anyway, um, I hope everybody down there comes through it okay, and, you know, sorry for the ones that, that passed on. Anyhow, um, so, what am I up to? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what, what to get into. Musty One's suggestion was to set up the shop for functionality. <clears throat> he admitted that his, he keeps his shop, his garage, in his work area, his workshop in good shape. Um... <clears throat> as good a shape as one keeps a workshop if you actually use and work in it, right? Um, but he admits that his tent buildings and all that other kind of stuff is kind of uh, kind of a uh, um, uh, stacked stacked up with stuff. So, um, I you, you know, I mean that's in interesting, perhaps even inspirational. You know, one of the things, these these buildings are okay for storage. But having a bunch of small ones, I'm, I'm just thinking that it's, it's not working out because 
Um, anything I put in here first means I got to take 14 other things out to get to it and, and junk like that. I'm, I'm almost thinking it, it would probably be better to get like a, um, like one 20 by 24, 24 by 24, um, that opens big enough so that I can actually get inside of it without bending over and, you know, straining my back when I got to move things in and out and fighting with it like that. So, you know, certain things work and certain things don't work. And depending what you're trying to do with the hoop buildings, they work. They are a cheap way of getting things undercover. And if you actually support the center, they will come through the winter in, in one piece. Um, but as I look look through my hoard, I got to figure out a way of of having permanent shop space. To have to roll out one vehicle like that, or to have a couple parallel here, such that you know you open the door and you push them out, no big deal. But when you start clustering stuff in front of the door so that you got to move the crap in front of the door before you can move the crap out of the garage, before you can move something into the garage so that you can work on it. It's going to be, uh, it takes a long time to do anything, right? You know, you're, you're spending hours in setup mode to do a 15 minute job, which means you have a tendency not to do it. So I, I, I do have to uh, work on that. I have been considering putting um, some concrete out here right a concrete apron a couple of different reasons one of the reasons is to make it easier to roll stuff in and out and I even considered um, even possibly putting a little a little you know roof roof thing over this because I do actually like working back here and do like working outside but I don't much care for kneeling down on the grass and getting ants and bugs and ticks and everything else crawling all over me um, this area I live in the Hudson Valley and we have a lot of trouble with uh, deer ticks um, which leads to Lyme disease which leads to all kinds of trouble I had a vaccine for Lyme disease years ago um, I don't know if the vaccine is still any good I don't know if the immunity that it provides wore off mostly around me I have dog ticks those big guys the ones that, you know, once they bite you and uh, pump themselves full of your blood, they kind of look like a um, blueberry, and they get to be the size of a blueberry. Um, so, uh, you know, they don't have Lyme disease, but they got encephalitis or something like that, which is even worse. Makes your brain swell, and it screws you up that way. So, um so generally speaking, rolling around all over the grass is not a good idea. And areas like this, when, when you let stuff grow up like this, you end up with deer tick in this or, or even um, deer tick or even the dog tick in it. Because they, um, mice like this, and wherever you have mice, it turns out mice seem to be uh, the key to getting a lot of the tick population floating around. I don't have guinea hen floating around. I do have that, that cat that seems to be pretty good at whacking mice and, and other small animals. But uh, even with that, every once in a while, I'll find a deer tick or a dog tick on me. As a matter of fact, it was one on that leg the other day, um, which I'm wondering if that didn't cause me my ankle problem and my shoulder problem getting bit by the stupid tick. All right, folks, I've been babbling for a long time and getting nothing done. Well, at least I troubleshot that pressure washer, so I got something done today. Yay. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for subscribing. Sorry I've been a little slow. Well, beyond slow. Sorry I've been um, really remiss at um, answering comments. i, I got to get back to that. Um, just, just been busy as heck tired as heck too so i don't know i gotta get back to it um you'll you'll hopefully you'll see the comments start rolling back in um thanks for sticking with me thanks for watching commenting subscribing we'll catch up with you guys on the next episode of the horde till then remember to keep your tires down your heads up live your life to the fullest bye now